we have breaking news in the SEC versus Ripple case as the scheduling order that we've been waiting for finally dropped and it is a doozy. Buckle up because we're going to be in this for the long haul. If we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. We'll take a quick look at the crypto market before we dive in. We are down a massive 5% on the day, back to 1.85 trillion. Bitcoin has dumped below 40K. Ethereum back under 3,000. XRP, 72 cents, but still in the sixth spot. Big losers in the seven to nine spots. You've got Solana, Luna, Cardano, and then in the 10 spot, Avalanche, all down five to seven percent on the day a very red day across the board as we look at the crypto market but we've got the major announcement to check out here in the scheduling now real quick just a reminder in the video description and in the pinned comment the ledger nano s plus is available now with the bigger screen nft friendly and still under 80 bucks Check it out if you don't have a ledger yet because it's a great way to keep your crypto safe, especially since we're going to be waiting for a while as we have the joint scheduling order just released in the SEC versus Ripple case with dates extending all the way out until almost Christmas. Let's take a look at this. It was just filed, just posted within the last few minutes. So let's read through it. This is addressed to Judge Netburn, and you can see it is signed by Mark Sylvester, who we've seen on all these letters representing the SEC, Michael Kellogg, who is representing Ripple, the company, Matthew Solomon for Brad Garlinghouse, and of course, Martin Flumenbaum representing Christian Larson. So here we go. This is the scheduling order again as was ordered to them to provide this to the court. So you can see here at the very beginning, pursuant to the court's March 23rd, 2021 order, plaintiff SEC and defendants Ripple Labs, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson respectfully request that the court enter the following briefing schedule for summary judgment motions and motions to exclude the testimony of experts Pursuant to Rule 702 to 705 of the Federal Rules of Evidence in the Daubert versus Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals line of cases. So here you go. Motions for summary judgment, Rule 56.1 statements, and motions to exclude expert testimony must be filed by August 2nd, 2022. Oppositions to any motions for summary judgment. Uh, responses to Rule 56.1 statements and responses to motions to exclude expert testimony must be filed by November 2nd, 2022. Replies to any opposition must be filed by December 20th, 2022. This schedule would not apply to any motions to exclude the expert testimony of Anthony M. Bracco, who offered testimony about the remedies available in this case. The parties agree that any motion to exclude Mr. Bracco's testimony should be postponed until the issue of remedies is ripe, following the completion of motion practice on liability and any additional fact or expert discovery on the issue of disgorgement. Under this court's practice rules, memoranda in support of summary judgment are limited to 30 pages. There are three defendants. The parties propose that each side will have a total of 90 pages for its summary judgment motions and oppositions and 45 pages for replies. Those pages can be divided among the three, depend or three defendants and allocated by the SEC at their discretion. Each Daubert motion and response will be limited to 25 pages per side, provided, however, that any party may seek leave of the court to file an omnibus Daubert motion exceeding 25 pages if appropriate, and then again respectfully submitted all parties. This is a big deal. You can see now, as we look at the scheduling, this is dragging out to the end of the year here, 
plus this, as you can see in the document, is just for the actual filings, right? So you've got motions, oppositions, replies, but there's still going to be action even after that, right? We still would have to wait for the final decision coming from the court. So you can see the response among the community is that of frustration, emotional damage, and a lot of unhappy folks as we have to continue to wait to see an outcome from this case. So holders are going to have to be patient. We've been patient thus far. At this point in the case, remember we started this journey back in December of 2020. We're almost a year and a half in. This looks to extend all the way through to that two-year anniversary. That is a kind of key mark there, is they're getting right up on it with those final replies and with the extension even beyond that. So we might expect to be in a holding pattern uh, through this summer period. So you might want to just, like we talked about, find a ledger, relax, let your crypto be safe, and decide on other activities to uh, pass the time. This is a source of frustration, obviously, for members of the community who are hoping to see some sort of resolution within the coming months. But as it is playing out right now, it certainly does seem like both the SEC and the Ripple side want to fight it out until the end to get an actual result from the court because of the magnitude of this case for the Ripple, certainly, but for the SEC, as they look to avoid having dangerous precedents set for them, as they're going to want to pursue other parties in the future. Now, lots of people have hypothesized around settlements, and there's been so much talk about that, but talk without evidence. There has been no actual statement released. We have no real uh, documentation or evidence of a settlement happening right now, only those rumblings. So there's still going to be some time ahead of us. What do you think? Do you think a settlement is still a possibility? Or do you think that we're going to really have to hold on and see this all the way through potentially into 2023? I'm curious what your thoughts are. We've seen some of the lawyers weigh in on proposed or expected timelines over the course of the last week. This, of course, will color some of the conversation going forward. So I'm eager to see some of the further details provided in their opinions. But again, this just dropped this afternoon a few moments ago, and I wanted to make sure that you got it first. I hope this was helpful. If it was, make sure to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps the channel a ton and makes sure you get the information most important to you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. That way I can keep you up to date on all the latest as it comes out. And don't forget to check out the link in the video description and pinned comment for Ledger. That way you can keep your crypto safe. Thank you for spending some of your time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and start to the weekend. And I will see you in the next one.